You know, it's always a fun bit. What's that? You ever watch How I Met Your Mother? Yeah. So, the character Marshall on there married to Lily. Mm-hmm. And uh, Marshall and Lily have only ever had sex yes, with each other. I love this. And, <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert, Pat and I were virgin giga chads <laughs> until we uh, had, had a coitus with our wives. Mm-hmm. Um, now I mean you know I guess that depends on your definition of yeah I'm, virgin. I'm a little bit of like a like a Bill Clinton on that one. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that's like, oh, I'm never yeah, gonna describe. Like, I did not have sexual relations with that saying, woman. I did not have sexual intercourse with that woman. Have you ever seen those interviews where just brief side tangent the interview of him getting interviewed about it and the news reporter says, "Is it not true that you used a cigar to pleasure Monica Lewinsky?" And his eyes like. <laughs> His eyes kind of like, his eyes do the thing where he's like, oh, God, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, Marshall Anyways, and Lily. Yeah. They're the only ones having sex with each other. They're, and Marshall always does this bit. Whenever Ted and Barney are talking about, because Ted and Barney, they've had sex with a lot of women. Mm -hmm. They're talking about their, uh, you know, their exploits. Yeah. And they're like, this one chick I was doing it with. And then they go into detail. Mm -hmm. And Marshall just wants to join in. Mm -hmm. And so, even like in front of Lily, he'll just be like, yeah, this one chick I was doing it with. And they're like, it doesn't work, Marshall. We know it was Lily. <laughs> we know you've only ever had sex with Lily. He's like, oh, come on, though. Like, <laughs> I just want to be a part of the bit. And like, the cool thing is that Lily is just like, you know, she's so secure. Knowing that her husband is only mm -hmm. like he's only talking about like their own sexual intimacy that she's just like thinks it's funny mm -hmm. and chill. But I'd like doing that bit. That's like my yeah. favorite bit. You do that bit. I almost I will do that back to Billy Jean, bro. Mm. My wife and I'll just be like, Yeah, this one chick I was like having yep. sex with and then I'll just like she just rolls her eyes at me as yep. I describe a time when we made love. I've I've done the same thing. Not to my bros, but to my wife. Yeah, I don't I don't uh there's I got some respect for my woman, you know? I only I only share comedic <laughs> things that occurred during coitus with my homies. <laughs> like and not like like a not like a yeah, we were having sex and then my wife made an idiot of herself. Right. Mm -hmm. Never in that vein. Right. Just in the vein of like, dude, here's the truth, man. Sex is better when you're willing to laugh at the funny things that happen during sex. You're not a professional. It's okay. <laughs> you're not getting paid for this jig. You know? You know? Exactly. <laughs> and like, I think, I think it makes one, I think it builds trust being mm -hmm. able to like objectively be like, this is funny. That was a funny sound. This is a funny looking uh, position we find ourselves in. You know what I mean? Like, and I think like, I think like that it stuff is okay to like share and discuss be, as long as it's like, you're, you, it can never be something where it violate, it violates that like trust of intimacy or privacy. Right. Dude, I have heard like stories come through the grapevine mm -hmm. that like, well, whatever, like particularly it goes like this. I think mostly dude, I think, I think, I think married men, kind of keep stuff to themselves yeah maybe in the circles i run in but maybe i think in general more than like maybe females hanging out talking and being like sharing about something about because i've heard yeah. something like about a bro from my wife being like what like mm. like like your bro's wife told your wife about this? Yeah, and just being okay. like, and just not being, like your wife was telling you this right. sexual fact about your bro. Because I was gonna be like, Pat, no, 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 there's no. an issue here. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, not like that. there's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> no, just being like, oh my god, like this is an intimate space. His like, you can't share that stuff with other people. Yeah. You know, like sort of mm -hmm. thing of just being like, we're only human. Okay, yeah. good God. <laughs> yeah, I'll be honest though. There's not much I like. I can really think about, you know, uh, if I just like, you know, flip through it like a Rolodex, Rolodex yeah. in my mind of the uh, times my wife and I have been intimate. I can't think of a time that I'd really be that bummed that she told anyone about. Yeah. Well, congratulations, man! Like, there you go. Like, like what, there hasn't been a time where I've like been like I. <laughs> 
myself. <laughs> you know? like, like there's been nothing like that. Like, oh yeah. And even then, like I'm just be like, honestly, that's so gross because I just get grossed out by poo. <laughs> but like, but like honestly, like if that happened and her friends knew about it, I what can you do? Just yeah. like living it, be like, yep. <laughs> I think like I think like funny stuff is fine, but like yeah. when you border into like just places of he cries yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. you that's can't like, be sure that no, you can't be like, like, like yeah, every time my husband and i have sex he cries afterwards yeah dude, just, you cannot you can't sell your man out like that no, like dude, like in those like uh-uh. intimate areas you uh-uh. can't emasculate him like that because there's no. no coming back from that no one's mm-hmm. ever gonna look at you the same Mm-mm. oh yeah dude Bro, the, the, the worst <laughs> thing is, can you imagine dude can you imagine pat if like you know i came up to you on church on sunday and be like hey man it's all right, dog. Like, I thought about going to see a professional about that. You're like, what? But like, yeah, the, the crying after you ejaculate. It just, like, can you imagine, like, just like the f-ing rock that would fall yeah. out of your stomach Dude. onto the floor? You'd just be like, oh, my oh God, like, like you'd d- disappear. It would shrivel up and you'd feel so emasculated. And, like, on a real note, you'd feel so betrayed. <laughs> yeah. You'd feel so betrayed. Here's the thing, too, though. Oh. I'm so tight with my homies that my homies would know that about me before my <laughs> wife ever did. Right? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Like I tell my homies, I'd be like, yeah, guys, like, I know this is going to sound super depressing, but like, I don't know what it is, but I cry every time I ejaculate. And like, <laughs> and like if my, if that ever got out, if anyone ever was like going to my homies, be like, yeah, did you know, like Mick cries during sex? Oh, yeah. All my homies would be like, yeah, he's told us that. Like, of right, course. But, yeah, right, like that's you, old news. Why do you know that? Yeah. But that, that, yeah. Cause that'd be like your inner circle. Yeah. Not like, not the randos. So yeah. my favorite, uh, one of my favorite things about Marshall and how I met your mother oh, is yeah. the uh, part where there's one of the, he just talks about like, he loves this. Like, I think it's like he steals hospital socks cause they've got the grippies on the bottom for uh-huh. love, for, for love making. Oh, <laughs> bro. That's real talk, man. I need some of those. I have. I don't feel like this is violating anything, but dude, there's been several times where I've been in a position, and I know, like I'm running out of time here, because I can only go f- so wide on the splits on this carpet or on this hardwood floor, and like I was like I'm too much in the mo- move. <laughs> wait, wait, Pat, let's do this. Let's do this. Like I'm not talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so Pat, I was having sex with this chick yeah, once. <laughs> I was having sex with this chick once, and I like straight up almost like did the splits and fell on my ass because I was I couldn't keep my socks from sliding across <laughs> on the on that nylon cheap ass carpet. <laughs> oh Anyways, my god! I bet you can't guess who I was with. Oh my god! No, yeah. but that's funny. That's a bit happened. Right? Know, there we go. Yeah, Full circle. There you go. There you go, dude. That's actually I would love that. I usually think ahead and take my socks off, but sometimes you just are <laughs> such in a rush you forget. Oh my goodness, that is true. Anyways, <laughs> our mothers listen to this, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Um. Anyways, uh, okay. One thing that I did want to just briefly talk on. Not again. This is not like a. Uh, oh, do you got something you want to speak on? No, keep going. Keep going. We know last week. We're talking about something serious, mm-hmm. you know, the uh, the uh, female who identified as a male trans shooter at uh, at the church and all that. And we, we were very clear on making sure, like, people understand mm-hmm. we're not anti-trans people. We are not. There's no person that we're anti, right? But, like, that was an evil act. That was an awful thing. That person was evil. But in no way do we condone... Uh, Evil, like, can, in no way do we condone like being bigoted to trans people right. or anything like that. Like, they're still people; they still deserve, you know, forgiveness, Jesus' love, Jesus' grace, all that, mm-hmm. and respect um, as a human. As so I say that, just simply going in because I think this should be a funny bit in, mm-hmm. in, in digesting this and kind of analyzing it, dude. Dill Mulvaney, I think, is a clout chaser. I don't think he's actually trans. I think I've seen enough people kind of doing videos about Dylan Mulvaney that it's just like, mm-hmm. he's just doing whatever he can do to get money on the internets. <laughs> Bud Light, man, Bud Light partners with him. Mm. They say they made a pact and I'm like, well, I don't know how many times I've heard of a brand making a pact with a celebrity. Mm-hmm. I mean, that sounds kind of cut our palms, spit on it and then shake hands. Right. Like, why not just call it a, a deal mm-hmm. or a, we, we've signed a, a partnership. Yeah. yeah. But they say they made a pact with Dylan Mulvaney so they can, 
connect with their or authentically connect with uh, their audience. And I'm just like Bud Light. Who do you f-ing think is drinking Bud Light? Mm-hmm. <laughs> who, who do you think is drinking Bud Light and wants to look at a Bud Light can that has just a bunch of different pronoun backslash pronoun and Dylan Mulvaney's face on it? Like, I just I I think it's so goofy. Mm-hmm. I think it's so goofy. And you know, not to say like I'm not saying. You know, Dylan Mulvaney is a bad person. I don't know enough about them. I just know that, like, they've been in the limelight Mm -hmm. throughout time, always trying to pursue fame with whatever is popular internet culture, right? And I feel like in a relatively short amount of time. Well, and I guess I say this, too, as, like, having seen trans people on YouTube come out saying, like, we need to disassociate ourselves with the people who are doing trans stuff just to chase clout. Right. And all that. And like, you know, I could, I really don't give Because he, he like definitely made like zero dollars from that deal with Bud Light, right? <laughs> like it was just out of the I goodness of his heart. The, I think it was for the benefit of the trans community, honestly. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no I, money. I, I'm sorry if this offends anybody. I will put on a little bit of lip gloss and get Dude, on the, get, and get on the, yeah. there's a lot of things I do to get on the cover of a Bud Light can for the whatever yeah, the number was. Oh. That, how many yeah. zeros were on the back of that thing? A yeah. lot. Oh, yeah. And we're so, talking pact. We're talking six zeros. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude. <laughs> if we're drawing blood and making a pact, oh, I'm on six zeros. <laughs> yeah, dude. No <laughs> kidding. For sure. And so, yeah, the it's just, it, it, and here's the deal. I could see whoever this, like, I could see, like, some bored people being like, this is a, this is kind of like a good idea for stuff. And then I could see, like, a CEO being like, well, I do need another yacht. <laughs> like, you no, know? That's, see, that's what I was thinking. I'm, I don't think it was like, I think it was a, you know, diversity and whatever project right. presented on a PowerPoint. Mm-hmm. And I think Bud Light's secretly probably tanking or something like that. And the board <sighs> was like, well, this could be our like hail f- Mary, like yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, no, I I would say that they're We're actually ready just to like jump ship anyways. I think that they just can't tank, in a sense. Like oh, like they could do whatever the f- they, they could do whatever they want, and people are just going to still be like, maybe well, I'm still coming to pick up maybe. that thirty rack. Like yes, they will. Like the same people who burn their Nikes will stop buying that and like switch over to Bush. But they, I think those, those are, were I think already those are two different d- d- demographics. Those were already the Bush <laughs> drinkers, you know, maybe. I don't know. I think the people who burn their Nikes don't drink Bud Light. I think they They're Michelob Ultras. <laughs> like 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 guys who <laughs> like, Yeah. Like they drink they drink expensive craft beer. Yeah. 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 And so but like you know that that whatever what whatever I, the demographic is. I've never is. seen a guy drinking Bud Light wearing Air Jordans. That's my last point. Right, right. But, right. No, no, yeah. But I meant the, uh, there was like people during like the kneeling and stuff that were like, you mm-hmm. know, like, like I'm super patriotic. So I'm going to burn like all my, anything that with a swoosh on my it. mowing shoes. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That guy. It's like, I've had these since like 1982 for mowing my, like my lawn and I don't yeah. even have a lawn. I just have a piece of AstroTurf outside my double wide. Yeah. And a little kiddie pool that I rest my bunions in yeah. when it gets hot out. So I think that um, they won't lose any business from it. But they, they, I think the business, they're just like, you know what? There's only, it only buys us good faith too. Because if, if it's like, oh, everybody just thinks that we're just, uh, you know, we're just for sporting events and for like, you know, people with guns, you know, now it's like, oh no, we're, we're much wider than that. We, not whiter, wider, you know, we, we mm-hmm. can, we can, and, and the, uh, it's like, it's just for money. Yeah. yeah. Cause you know what? I would be tempted in that position to just say, yeah, I don't care. I'm sure it'll make me more money at the end of this quarter. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. I mean, it has nothing. I mean, let's be real. It has nothing to do with the trans community. It has, yeah. it's about trying to hit a market that they feel like they're probably not tapping into. And I mean, that's everything too, though. Like, let's be real. Is Bud Light going to start selling Bud Light cans in uh, the Middle East with Dylan Mulvaney on it? You better f-ing believe they won't. Mm-hmm. There ain't no way they're going to do that shit. Look at every single one of these companies for Pride Month, and they change all their logos to rainbows. Mm-hmm. Look at their Chinese accounts. Look at their Middle Eastern accounts. Right. You can see it on LinkedIn. It's not hidden. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's 
fucking crazy, dude. You see them all turn to pride flags. Woohoo, we stand for the cause. And then you see nothing about any of that shit on their Arabic, uh, you know, their, their primary like mm. Arabic language count. Mm. And like, I just remember seeing it for like Facebook on LinkedIn. Like I literally mm. was like, hmm, I wonder if the Chinese like page for Facebook on LinkedIn has this. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just like, it's just, it's such like money grab mm-hmm. uh, virtue it's, signaling. And money grab virtue signaling and then covering your ass. Yeah. You know, so you don't yeah. have to deal with, you know, people coming after you. Yeah. And I don't know. I just thought it was fucking so out of touch. You know, it's, I'm trying to think of like other things that people did that was like marketing moves that companies did that just made you think like, who the f- do you think is buying your product? And I know there's been some, I mean, a lot mm-hmm. of them are Super Bowl commercials, right? Throughout, you know, growing up, I can, th- I'm trying to think of Super Bowl commercials where I watched them and I was like, you really missed the mark here. Mm-hmm. You know, you you have, I don't know what you're thinking the demographic is, but that's not it. Right. Like, I have no idea. Maybe even like one might be like the weird Lincoln commercials with Matthew McConaughey. No, the dude Matthew McConaughey drives Lincoln. Yeah, he does. But it was just so weird. <laughs> I love those. You I love grew those? up on those commercials. I yeah. look forward to those every week. Mm. Uh, I think like uh, I think GoDaddy dot com knew exactly who their audience was. Oh, it was yeah. every Joe Schmo who just wanted to start a porn website in like <laughs> mid two thousands, <laughs> and they knew it because they were like the Dan. It was Dan Kilpatrick, like, right? Like with maybe her. Was it her? Or Dan Kilpatrick? You mean the NASCAR racer? Yeah. She was a GoDaddy, like, wasn't... Oh, she did have the sponsor on her NASCAR at some point. Right. Like, yeah. she's a... She's... But she wasn't, like, original GoDaddy girls, bro. Like, the original right. GoDaddy existed for a long time before she came on the scene. Right. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, do you remember how... I don't know if you remember this, but, like, my my uh, family, a lot of them watch NASCAR religiously every Sunday. Mm. I just was like, you... This yeah. is most boring thing <laughs> and i know that's i know that's killing some of my family members who listen to this but it was i mean i never watched it really i could yeah. watch maybe two laps and i was like dude i gotta do something that's what those things i could i could enjoy being there for a day dude being there is hella fun but not watching it yeah i loved going to the races i've been to a couple mm-hmm. but you can't catch me dead watching them but anyways uh i just remember how quickly the whole like female racer thing died i Mm. I didn't know a single person who watched nascar that had a problem with danica patrick being a nascar driver Mm -hmm. it was purely just like news media like trying to make it seem like there's people that issue because not a single member of my family was like what the a woman racing to the cars on the track this is not a safe place for her everyone was like "Ah, she's pretty cute all right yeah get in that car girl go for it kick their ass and like (laughs) i think I I just don't know a single guy who had beef with it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yep. The, and I think, I think everybody liked her, you know, in generally speaking. And yeah, those certain commercials and, and things, it's funny when you, whenever you watch a commercial come out, that's just definitely going to, it's just like a little fad that pushes something for a little bit. I think the king of the fad might be Taco Bell. Smoke break. Smoke break. Hey, Ken, it's Mick, and I've got something important to talk about. We all hope we never find ourselves in a self-defense situation, but life's unpredictable. Enter the National Self-Protection Plan from Attorneys on Retainer, an actual credible law firm you can put on retainer for your self-defense needs. For just $35 a month, you get national coverage in all 50 states for criminal and civil legal representation in self-defense situations, complete with a 24-7, 365 toll-free emergency line. That's real legal support when you need it most. What's in the package? Bail bonds, scene cleanup, firearm replacement, even mental health counseling, plus zero fees for a laundry list of defense-related costs like expert witnesses. So support the show and get yourself some peace of mind. Click the link in our show notes or visit our sponsors page to sign up for the National Self-Protection Plan from Attorneys on Retainer. Hey folks, Pat here. If you're like Mick and I, you're a fan of classic tales like Lonesome Dove, Blood Meridian, The Three-Body Problem, and Steinbeck's East of Eden. With Audible, you can dive into these epic stories anytime, anywhere. Sign up for a free month and your first audiobook is on the house. 
To start your free trial and support our show, click the link in the show notes or swing by the sponsors page on our website. Want an awesome website for your podcast? Check out PodPage. We use it for the Mick and Pat show and it's a game changer. Set it up in minutes, no coding needed. Support the show by using our link to get started. Your podcast deserves a home as great as ours. PodPage, the one-stop solution. Bro, Taco Bell and KFC are hardcore fad Dude, chasers. Especially because Taco Bell has like seven ingredients. They just keep sticking them together in different ways and then selling it to you. And I'm a sucker for it, dude. dude like I just had Taco like, Bell not dude, too long ago. When they're like, they'll be like, you ever had a chalupa? You're like, yeah. Like, how about a chalupa inside of a fried chicken shell instead of a chalupa shell? And you're like... Yeah, I'll eat that. Or like like same thing where it's like you've had cheese inside of a burrito for your whole life. Now we're going to melt it on the outside of the burrito. And you're like, oh, I got to have that right now. But the uh, Taco Bell, I think, is the king of the of the the fad marketing. And they just they don't have to change what they have really have in their shop. They just keep on putting it putting those seven ingredients together in different magical ways. And it keeps bringing with a, me in. With a slightly unique sauce each time. Yes. Bro, yeah. I remember when Diablo sauce came out and I ate a Taco Bell like twice mm-hmm. a week. Because I was like, oh, yeah. they did it. They heard me say hot wasn't hot enough. Mm-hmm. And they dropped the Diablo. Yeah. Dude, um, top 10 marketing mistakes here brought to you by topmba.com. 10 brands of businesses that got their marketing horribly wrong. Let's see if you recall any of these. Heineken's tagline mistake. Heineken ran an advert in 2018 uh, saying that lighter is better with Chance, uh, sorry, not Chance, the rapper, um, who was it that was in the ad? Oh, it was just a, there was three black people and there was a lighter skinned black woman. <laughs> and he just ran the ad saying lighter is better. And oh then like Chance God. the rapper came out saying it was racist and all that. I think I do remember that. It was like a, it was just like a, <laughs> they just say, <laughs> <laughs> 2018 dog like, <laughs> can't do that it's like not a good look for the germans <laughs> like uh then there was the gucci one i remember this one i can't remember who showed it to me i don't have a twitter but someone had showed me this one gucci did an ad uh with uh who was it um i can't remember who it was but they did an ad where they had a balclava knit top Mm. That went over the face and the whole upper torso. Mm. And then they just said, Balclava knit top by Gucci. Happy Black History Month, y'all. And it's just like, that's blackface. Like, you just put a black mm. knit mask over someone and said, happy black, yeah. <laughs> happy black History Month. And it's just like, so rich and out of touch mm-hmm. that you don't know what's going on in the world. Mm. Um <clears throat> I'm trying to think of a couple other ones here scrolling through. A lot of them are fashion companies and like I know like a lot of perfumes have done shit that's just like wait a second. Mm. Were all the bad guys in that commercial black? Mm. You know what I mean? Like it was pretty mm-hmm. like they've just been on the nose like not really self-aware. Mm. Um Dove did the body positive packaging where they just made one bottle fat and the other bottles were just kind of the hourglass shit oh, it's goodness. just like the f- is do you think before you throw this shit out there um while i'm scrolling through anything come to mind do you remember any of the coke commercials any of the i mean uh, Pe- pepsi clear was i don't remember pepsi clear uh i think it was when was it pepsi clear but i mean it tasted just like pepsi but People were just so freaked out. Oh, yeah. I do remember, like, because they were just like, why is it clear? I don't trust it. And it's yeah, like, it's it, just Pepsi through a coffee filter. Guys. Yeah, or just out. like without the stuff added that makes it supposed to look like cola. And so it, that was one that people were not fans of. Um, CNN Plus was a total, like, wreck a couple of years ago. Um, I think it was called oh, CNN yeah. Plus, where they were like... And it died right away, dude. It, no one dude, subscribed. It died in 30 minutes. It yeah. was like... And I forget how many millions or whatever. It was, it was like a... I mean, it was hundreds of millions of dollars that mm-hmm. went to waste building it out. Yeah, and they're like, no one's really watching this channel 
like CNN. Yeah. So we better make an app that people would really want to watch like our, our like extracurriculars on. Something happened with that too. It was like a, it was like a, it wasn't a BET, but it was like one of those networks that was purely supposed to be just like a network for African Americans. Hmm. And it was gonna be. It was like a subscription model one. It was. It mm. was. Or it was, it was like a, a paid, uh, premium channel on like Comcast or whatever. Mm. And uh, it floundered, and couldn't stay on the air. Couldn't afford the airtime, mm. and it went off. And people were just like, some people. I mean, not a lot of people, because most people knew why it didn't succeed. Some right. people were just like, "What the? Fuck? Why didn't this work? Don't, aren't there a lot of people who want to see his content?" It's like. It's a premium cable TV channel that you have to pay extra for outside the standard a hundred mm-hmm. and something bucks a month cable mm-hmm. in a time where cable is dying and streaming is growing. Mm-hmm. And it's something that was only accessible in America. Mm. And it's like at best, how many of the 13.2% of the population that's black is going to watch that over mm-hmm. the other content that they're already subs- like cons- consuming and mm-hmm. going to want to pay extra for that. Right. You know what I mean? And it was just, it was just like, they didn't realize like you're already in a niche market. Mm-hmm. Good luck competing with the already established, like primarily black entertainment TV. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. And I just, I, it was so obvious. Like so many people ran articles of like, this is obvious why it didn't work guys. Like you, put yourself in a corner mm-hmm. and then some people just like always there's always someone scratching their head h&m here uh h&m had a listing on their website with a young uh probably like looks to be like seven maybe nine year old black model mm. and he's wearing a hoodie saying coolest monkey in the jungle oh my god uh, after the backlash, they officially hired and appointed a diversity manager to deal with the fallout. And it's just like, mm. how did that? How did that slip by? That honestly sounds to me like a French photographer. Like, mm. like mm. what if you would put the boy in the uh, coolest monkey in the jungle? Wouldn't that be cute? And it's just like, no, no, right. no, no, no. Right. And even like, let's say like, benefit of the doubt. How, like, dude? No, How no, no, is no, no, no. Benefit of being like, like, like the, the dude didn't read English. Uh, yes, <laughs> oh, yes, that yeah. all the way over to like, you know, I call my little boys monkeys, like yeah. my kids, like, but dude. like, I'm not, I'm not saying you can. I'm not saying you can. I'm just saying like, someone who is, in some ways, like, so out of, so maybe innocently out of touch. They were like, oh, oh my god, I would never think of that now their checks and balances and however that got to where it showed yeah. on air needed to be checked. But, yeah. you know, and, and I'm not saying it's like, obviously if it's a malintent, you can't do that. It, but then like, I just would hope that it was like innocently out of touch, but a lot, but the amount of people who touched that had to have been like, you know what? We can't do that. Yeah. Cause people are going to take it the wrong way. You know, actually now that I think about it, I know H and M is technically like almost like entirely, Chinese owned or something like that. Mm. Like H and M is, you know, it's all like super cheap sweat lot sweatshop clothes. Mm-hmm. And uh I wouldn't be surprised if that was actually like a foreign language not like understanding mm-hmm. the context. Yeah. And that it got through and then like someone on the more like on the American side saw it and was like, what the f Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Take this uh, the, destroy the website. Take the website offline <laughs> before so we can like get this off, you know? Right. But, um, because I mean, I know there's been things like too. I wish uh, maybe I'll look that up. Um, I mean, I'm not going to be nearly as aware as aware of context because, of course, I'm not a um, member of another uh, nationality in another country. But I want to see like the top ten times America or England just not aware of Chinese context or something. Because we oh, do yeah. we do pour billions of dollars a mm-hmm. year into advertising to the Chinese, especially right. with movies. Movies is like the biggest thing. Right. right. And with movies, like I'd say like with movies, we actually bend too much to like offending them in a, or trying yeah. to not offend them in a, uh, in ways that shouldn't be offensive. Just where we're like, uh, we disagree with your politics. And, and for instance, like the, uh, the newest, the remake of, Red Dawn, 
was supposed to be all it was supposed to be China invaded America. Yeah, but it turned into North Korea but last they, second. They and they had to they had to re they had to re go through and CGI everything. Mm. And like even like some of the dialogue in there is actually like Chinese and stuff because I had a Korean buddy watching it with me. And he was like, these guys aren't even speaking Korean. Like, what's going on? Oh, really? Yeah, they were he, speaking Chinese? They were speaking yeah, other stuff and like maybe different dialects and stuff or whatever was maybe overdubbed or Chinese wow. originally. But enough, it was changed enough that, you know, it was, you know, Korean so that we wouldn't offend China. Yeah. You know, it's such a huge market, though. Right. It's like I've heard that like the Chinese market now has mm-hmm. re- totally replaced like what we used to rely on as DVDs. Yeah. Like the the DVD sale, VHS sale market has been now replaced with like the international going to China market. Mm. Um <clears throat> American Motors. This is the uh 13 international marketing mistakes. American Motors. Uh product a translatable product name is an important element in global branding. Yada yada yada. Uh, they made a mistake in the early 1970s by naming its mid-sized car the Matador. Although the name was intended to conjure images of courage and strength, it was a little too aggressive for Spanish-speaking consumers, and Spanish Matador means killer. Mm. No one really wants to drive a car named the killer. And, <laughs> like, uh, Matadors and bullfighting is super controversial in Spain. It is. And it's, like, only yeah. done in, like, one... I don't know what they're called. Counties yeah, or provinces, not, but it's, it's not only... Like everywhere anymore. I think it's only in, like... Uh, Catalonia or so, uh, what? It's it's only done in like one place that still I mean, has it legal. Honestly, whatever you say, you're gonna be wrong because Spain is almost constantly at the edge of <laughs> civil disunion. You yeah, know what I mean? like, yeah. Spain is Spain's got like three countries in it that are constantly trying to break out. Right. Um, BMW uh, made a mistake for improperly using the national anthem of the United Arab Emirates. Uh, the ad displayed the uh, Al Ain Football Club. Al Ain. I think yeah. that's the way you say it. Uh, singing the anthem and then breaking into a run towards several BMW cars when they heard the sound of an engine. Although the brand was trying to arouse intense emotion, it evoked rage instead of passion. Emir- Emiratis found it incredibly offensive that the car company suggested its cars were more important than the national anthem. Oh, that's just a cultural like misstep. Like we, you like, like yeah. Did that's funny though makes sense i mean honestly second to america probably even more than america dude i feel like the middle east has an incredibly high level of like authentic patriotism oh yeah you know what i mean and like i would say like america used to probably be the most patriotic nation Mm -hmm. nowadays it's like i feel like every i feel like there are less americans that genuinely would die for this country Mm -hmm. than there are Middle Easterns who would genuinely give up their life for their country, you mm-hmm. know, like they take a lot of pride, especially. And I, I feel like the uh, Emirates, like that's a very patriotic nation. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know who Braniff Airlines is. Uh, Coors, Coors. When launching its "Turn It Loose" campaign in Spain, it appears that executives forgot to ensure the translation would resonate with customers. Uh, when translating Spanish, the tagline can be interpreted as suffer from diarrhea, <laughs> which if you have enough course, you will, you will suffer from diarrhea. That's awesome, dude. That's f-ing funny. Oh my uh, gosh. Dolce and Cabana, classic, classic, uh, fashion company making a big, uh, oh, um, had a series of ads on social media in which a Chinese woman attempted to eat Italian food with chopsticks. While a male voice gave her directions. Oh, I remember seeing that actually. I think mm. I remember seeing it on like Snapchat, I want to say. Mm. Like it was it was in the Snapchat ads. Uh, the ad was denounced and consumers in China, one of Dolce & Gabbana's mar- largest markets, threatened to boycott the brand. Even the Chinese government weighed in. Dude, yeah, what the f*** are you thinking? A Chinese woman with chopsticks is clearly going to be able to eat spaghetti or Italian food. Right. It's mostly pasta and noodles. Like <laughs> right. what the f- you're going for like yeah. oh my that's that feels pretty tone deaf um i don't know what electrolux electrolux is ford uh hoping to highlight its cars excellent manufacturing they launched an ad campaign in belgium that said every car has a high quality body however the translate slogan read every car has a high quality corpse oh my gosh dude oh my god the, now you gotta know what's synonymous and what's mm-hmm. not um, HSBC Bank. 
uh, spent millions of dollars on its five-year-old Assume Nothing campaign. In many countries, the message was translated as Do Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine a bank just like, Do Nothing? <laughs> HSBC Bank. Like, that would be pretty mixed. KFC, fuck yeah. Uh, anytime <laughs> KFC does something, it's almost always not aware racist <laughs> <No. laughs> um, uh, in Beijing the company's famous slogan finger licking good it translates to eat your fingers off mm. I do remember that one uh, it is the top fast food restaurant in China today though mm. dude I actually think I, I think I remember hearing that from people who had gone to China that the Chinese f- love KFC dude That's hilarious. like it is something they go out of their way for like they don't want to eat most American food but they love KFC dude that stuff that clogs your aorta you need it sometimes dude you ever actually like have that deep deep craving for like those like esophagus clogging hot mashed potatoes and gravy <laughs> yes. that come in the paper cup oh yeah dude, dude those mashed potatoes are so Good. <laughs> I don't want to know what's. I in don't want to. I don't want to know what they look like before they add water to it and yeah. stick it in. Stick it in the Spy Kids microwave. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Oh man. Um, Pampers had one here uh, that uh, when they're selling pam- Pampers in the diapers in Japan, uh, it features a stork delivering a baby. The imagery works in the U.S., but it never caught on with Japanese parents. After some research, the company learned that customers were concerned and confused by the image of a stork on the package. The tale of a stork delivering a baby to his parents isn't part of Japanese folklore. So their stories their stories involve giant floating peaches bringing babies to awaiting parents. I kind of get that. anatomically accurate. Yeah, true. Uh-huh. Wow, true. I've never, I've never really thought... A stork looks like a vagina. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> um, Nike, uh, they had a logo at the time in 1997 that resembled the Arabic word for Allah. So that was a big no, no. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, last one here, Mercedes Benz. Uh they decided to introduce cars to the Chinese market under the shortened name Benzi rather than Mercedes Benz. However, the word means rush to die in Chinese. <laughs> Dude, another one where it's just like the first like, thing you should do when you're like making an automobile marketing ad is mm-hmm. like, is there anything in here that illustrates that our cars will kill you? Right. <laughs> or like, like <laughs> everybody should have learned from the Nova. What about the Nova? The uh, Chevy Nova killed it here in america in america it was sexy they are sexy dude. they are sexy i would love to have a nova they did horrible south of the border no va means no go oh so like they, they try to sell oh, cars right, yeah. like should yeah. have no go and so they the, the car marketer should have should have caught on to that and been hiring like multiple linguists to cross check each other on mm-hmm. those things oh man that's always funny stuff i always enjoy kind of hearing about that stuff companies mm. are made up of people too this is true and i always wonder sometimes the people who find themselves running them may have kind of just found themselves there Dude, peter principle bro you know the peter principle Mm-mm. the peter principle is this philosophy that you, whatever you are good at, mm-hmm. you will actually be promoted out of, mm. and you will continue to be promoted up until the point of incompetency. Mm. And essentially, people, everyone reaches like the farthest they go in life mm-hmm. is until they reach the level of compo- incompetency and they can't go any further. Mm. And uh, when you see, I feel like a lot of people who around the boards of businesses. Mm-hmm. You're just like, how the f- did you get here? Like high government level stuff, yeah. high business level stuff. Yep. And uh, I think that's good for a good little transition for the next thing I want to talk about, which was destiny. And uh, how do you end up there? Uh, oh, I thought you meant like the social media persona. Oh, total. B- uh, no, <laughs> nope. But the, I had, there's a little story I was going to read. 
Please read it. All right. The speaker, the narrator, is death. So there was a merchant in Baghdad who sent his servant to market to buy provisions. <clears throat> and in a little while, while the, while the servant came back, white and trembling, he said, Master, just now when I was in the marketplace, I was jostled by a woman in the crowd. And when I turned, I saw it was death that jostled me. She looked at me and made a threatening gesture. Now lend me your horse and I will ride away from the city and avoid my fate. I will go to Samara and there death will not find me. The merchant lent him his horse and the servant mounted it and he dug his spurs into its flanks and as fast as the horse could gallop he went. When the merchant went down to the marketplace and he saw me standing in the crowd, he came and he said, why did you make a threatening gesture to my servant when you saw him this morning? I was not a uh, threatening in gesture, I said. It was only a start of surprise. I was astonished to see him in Baghdad, for I had an appointment with him tonight in Samara. Mm. I actually feel like I've heard a very similar uh, version of that. Hmm. Tell me, Pat, why do you want to share that about destiny? I think it's a story that can we avoid our fate? And the more you try to avoid it, do you end up running right into it? You know, like in this, in this character, in this very simple little story, he would, you know, his, his fate was to die that night in that town. And he found himself there trying to avoid death. Mm. Yeah. It's kind of like grandfather paradox. What's that? So you are somehow in one way or another given the ability to time travel. Mm -hmm. And you go back in time and you find out that like, you know, maybe it's like you, uh, sorry, sorry, I butchered it. <laughs> you find out you have the ability to time travel mm -hmm. and you're like, you know, it would be great is if I went back in time to save my grandfather from dying. Mm. Cause you know, your grandmother has told you stories about how great your grandfather was and all mm -hmm. that. And so you go back in time to try to save him from dying. So you can know him and get to know him and grow up with him. And inadvertently your choices are what lead to his death. Mm. And then you have sex with your grandma and then you are like you, you met you, you mm -hmm. are the reason you exist now. Oh my goodness. That yeah. is, and it's, absolutely perfected mm. in an episode of Futurama. Really? Yeah. Fry literally goes back in time, tries to save his grandfather, kills mm. him. <laughs> his grandmother thinks he looks so much like her mm. dead uh, fiance. Mm. And then he ends up being his own grandfather. Mm. Back to the future. -y. Oh, yeah. And the story of Oedipus. Kind of. I don't remember the story of Oedipus. Didn't Oedipus... So Oedipus goes to see a seer, uh -huh. an oracle. And the oracle says, you will kill your father and you will sleep with your mother. Oh, God. And he says, Bet. heck no. <laughs> and so he leaves his home where he grew up and lived his life. Um, little did he know that he was adopted mm. when and raised by adopted parents. And on the road out of his journey, he runs into a king who mouths off to him and he challenges him and he kills the king. Mm -hmm. And then through some other circumstances, rises in power and marries the queen. Mm -hmm. But he was the prince. Wow. And so when he finds out these things to be true, he gouges his eyes out. And that's the Oedipus complex and it comes from this. And then also like to but just classic Greek tragedy. Here's my thing. I mm -hmm. just think the Oedipus complex is entirely misused. I agree. I agree. The Oedipus but that's where complex is often used for like the Norman Bates. Right. I someone, love my mother, someone who wants that. Right. Yeah. And so it's a, yeah, the Oedipus complex is, it's separate and something. That's where it, it comes from that story. Yeah. Interesting. I feel like the Oedipus complex makes more sense in the context of, I hate my mother. So I'm going to try to like get away from her and you end up just married to a woman who's just as mean and naggy and maybe as abusive as your mother was, mm. you know, or something like mm -hmm. that. Like 
I feel like that would make more sense than like how it's often referred to. Mm. Right. Um. Anyways, Destiny. Here's my thing. Mm-hmm. It when you talk about this, it really boils down to you're either a believer in free will mm-hmm. or not. Right. You're either a believer in that everything is chaos and every uh, like every choice creates a branching, you know, a branch from a different choice, mm-hmm. and that there could have been multiple streams mm-hmm. always forking and branching off. Or there's just one river, dude. There's just one river that you were always destined to flow mm-hmm. down. And I tell you what, Pat, I have a theory on it. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm curious to see what your thoughts are on the re- in regards to destiny, mm-hmm. free will. Yeah, I mean we don't have you know we don't have a a ton of time to dive yeah. into it. We can always come back and circle around into it, but. You know, you you bring the topic up, mm-hmm. so you got to have something to say on it. You know, I think that um, for me, it's not necessarily binary, as in chaos or this straight line, because I believe in a higher power mm-hmm. that does at times involve itself in our lives. And so the so it's this weird. I, I do believe that the choices we make in life have consequences, and the decisions we make steer where our life goes. Mm-hmm. And weirdly, at the same time, I believe God outside of time knows the choices we will make and where we will go, and doesn't intervene necessarily, but meets us in those places. And so therefore there's something that knows, it knows where we will end up Mm. and will sometimes redirect or help or provide clarity or provide a way. And so I don't think that, you that there I, I do believe in free will and where you go in life depends on these decisions you make and what you make of life but at the same time it's because i believe in a god knowing us outside of time that there is not a predestined f- fate necessarily that like with the day you're born, that's just is your fate where you will end up, but that there is something that involves itself in the chaos, if that makes any sense. And that's that's not very deeply philosophically put. I mean, you know? I, I hear what you're saying, yeah, and I I can put myself in the in the shoes of what you're saying. Mm-hmm. At the same time, if this higher power you believe in mm-hmm. is a creator, right? Is the one that chooses to give you life mm-hmm. and is all knowing, knowing exactly the choices you will make, mm-hmm. knowing you'll never diverge from those because then it wouldn't be all knowing. Right. Right. If it's all knowing and knows exactly this route, you're going to take in your mm-hmm. final d- destination, right? Mm-hmm. Heaven or hell. Then did you really have a choice and I'm not saying no, right? I'm not saying no, you didn't, right? But, but I'm did just you? saying, like, the art, the case, the case, you know, the question is, like, do you really have choices if this thing knows everything you're going to do, right? And it's the ultimately the thing that decides to give you, uh, give you life and an opportunity to mm-hmm. live life. I think, yes, because the is not controlling, he doesn't control where you go. So just because it knows right. what you will do doesn't mean that it controls what you do. Right. Perhaps it only controls whether you do. Right. Like, whether you have the opportunity to do. Right. Or like, and I I think about my kids now where I go like, sometimes I know little Pat is going to like go put his hand in the cookie jar. Yeah. And I could intervene and I could stop him. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, and 
Sometimes I do. Most of the time, though, I don't, you know, and and then, you know, it's like the and depending on how that plays out, I have a reaction or a consequence to those things. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, it's like little Pat, I'm not going to let him step in the road when the bus is coming. And this obviously is very oversimplified because then you're getting into like, well, why do bad things happen? Why do let bad things happen to people? These sorts of things. But as a loving father, I don't control his every move and his everything, but I'm kind of watching. And just cause I'm, I am, mm -hmm. I was once him. I kind of know what he's going to do and I'm no God, but I know what my son's going to kind of get himself into. And I, and like, I was watching him play in the yard the other day and he had no idea. Mm -hmm. He's just doing his thing, playing pretend, running around, throwing a ball, playing with a friend out there. And I was just sitting there in the window, just observing and letting it, letting it unfold and taking joy in the unfolding. Yeah. You know, and the, like one of those points was like, Oh, he's maybe about to push that kid off of like the top of the slide. And like, I don't know what's going to happen. And this time he didn't, you know, but in that tiny little experience and metaphor, I feel like I see truths in that. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to agree nor disagree. Mm -hmm. I'll share. We can, whenever we circle back around to this, I'll, I'll share my thoughts on it. But mm. I, uh, just because I, I don't want to spoil my opinion or anything like that. And I also want people to be thinking about it without thinking that, you know, both of us think exactly alike and just wouldn't entertain any, any other philosophy. Right. You know what I mean? Um, I'm a big believer that, to truly think of yourself as intelligent, you have to be able to entertain philosophies that you do not believe in. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to a hundred percent subject yourself to what would it be like? And can I understand that belief mm -hmm. and as well do that and be able to say, well, I don't believe that, but I can understand why they think that way or what their logic is. Um, all that said, uh, I think my final question with that mm. before I, throw on this video that I want you to watch. Um, when it comes to then this being mm -hmm. that gives us free will, mm -hmm. in your opinion, and doesn't interject itself, what do you think about the concept of God and God's, God's will? Do you think mm -hmm. God intercedes as we go about? Do you think a God does step in and punish to prevent us from going to do things? Do you think God steps in and delivers us from things? Or are you a believer in that God is kind of like what you were doing, watching the child mm -hmm. and perhaps knowing because he's all knowing mm -hmm. knows exactly what will happen, knows all the good, all the bad and un understands the purpose and you know, whatever it may be on the on greater impact. Mm -hmm. Cause I think a lot of people think like, well, why didn't God do something? Right. And then I hear a lot of people also say like, I think personally, I think it's an immature saying to be like, well, God delivered me from this. And I think often it's not used in a, in a, in appropriate context mm -hmm. because then I, I have heard a million other people think, well, why would he do that? And not for me. Right. You know? And like, I think, people need to be very careful with that kind of language of like God, God's teaching you, God's punishing you, God's disciplining you, mm -hmm. God's delivering you, God's saving you. Mm -hmm. Because as a, as a very strong believer, that language I think has done, I would argue more harm than good for the Christian church and, and a lot of the ways it's used. Right. I fully do believe God saves. Mm -hmm. I fully do believe that God allows things to happen for us to grow Mm -hmm. to, and I, but I, I, I do not believe in God disciplining us like God lets you get cancer to teach you a lesson. Right. I do not believe in God delivered me from that car accident by a miracle. 
Mm. I believe miracles can happen, mm -hmm. but I believe there is more of a, I believe miracles more in the context of like a delivery of prayer, you mm -hmm. know, like praying for something and then it happens. And mm -hmm. like, we've prayed for God to, you know, like intercede God mm -hmm. to heal things like that. And I think I feel that way because I feel God is very passionate about free will. Right. Like God is very passionate about our free will. And I mm -hmm. think God's very passionate about like even negative repercussions of others free will on our lives. Mm -hmm. And that like that demonstrates a broken world mm -hmm. that demonstrates the need for forgiveness, the need for healing, the need for uh, kindness, love, mercy, grace. Mm -hmm. So anyways, I kind of just shared what yeah. I, my thoughts were, but yeah. like, that's, that's like my always like antagonistic questions yeah. to people when they say, when they, when we talk about fate or destiny is like, D do you really believe that? Mm -hmm. then, you know? Right. The couple things and the cheapest or like simplest answer is like, yes. So like you said, like, is God this way or that way? Yeah. It's like, yes. Okay. You know, um, one person explained to me this way would be like, in some sense of God's will, uh, um, the, uh, like a bottle if I like those. of Horitos that I'm holding, um, the, our existence is in this bottle. Mm -hmm. God's will is this glass bottle. And what goes on in there is within his will. Now, this is too simple without getting into lots of the hard things of like, why did that kid get cancer? Sure. Right. But from a place of being saying that God is sovereign and I'm mere man without getting into the, these, why did these tragedies happen to people? Mm -hmm. The, or without trying to say it's God's will that, either you were saved from the car accident or it's God's will that you died in the car accident. Yeah. Um, the one person explained to me this way once, not necessarily that I believe it. One way to consider it is that we are, we are within God's will and we we're just in the bottle mm -hmm. and this is just going on inside there. And that's a very simple way to just like, I think, understand it positively when you're like, man, I just don't know if I should like take this job or not. It's like, well, like you're, you're in you're, like God's will for your life. Like, don't worry about it. Like you're in the bottle. And so it's like, it's, and it breaks down very quickly. I was so going to say, it breaks down very quickly. I'm already struggling here to really right. understand like, where does cancer fit in the bottle? Where does, like, right. where does a pedophile not die in the car accident, but a mother of four does. Right. You know what I mean? And the cop out answer in that is like, like, as, like I was saying, just like to be like, there's a sovereign God and I'm not it. Yeah. You know? And like, I, and so like, that's where it's kind of where lots of conversations break down to around like, well, I just have faith in it, sure. you know, or whatever. So, but that's one way to think about it. And then also I do think about a story in the gospel where Jesus has been asked to come to where a someone's daughter is dying uh -huh. and on his way there two miracles do happen in this story and in in one on its way there a woman touches his cloak and he feels power go out of him mm -hmm. and he says who touched me you know and that it was her faith and his compassion in that moment that that if she just touched him that she just touched him she yeah. was healed and he wasn't seeking her out. Mm -mm. And then by the time he gets to this girl, she'd already died. And he raises her from the dead. And I think... He raised her from the dead mm -hmm. because the father demonstrates absolute faith. Right, right, in him. That's correct. Yeah. And so, like, this... Uh, and once, like, one person in this story was, like, coming after him. And the other person was awaiting was awaiting him and he was headed to him mm -hmm. and so it's like was it god's will that that woman be healed of her bleeding you know it, and did that did she have free will to go do that and let that happen and you know it was going to happen mm -hmm. or did she seek that out and take it yeah and 
in the same sense of that other person who was lying dead on a slab. We was that there was intervention there. And so it's like, that's where my, like my answer is like, yes, the both and starts to yep. come and starts okay. to unfold in, in that. And I, I, I get that. And I, I think that, uh, I think that is a better example than the Haritos bottle. <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, I think that would touches on both concepts of a pursuit of free will mm-hmm. and an awaiting of intervention. Mm-hmm. Both, I would argue, are at their core God being all knowing mm-hmm. and still allowing free will to operate. Operate. Mm-hmm. Um, all that said though, uh, great topic, topic that deserves far more time. Yeah. Like, a, um, like a whole college semester and then, I, and then a lifelong pursuit. Yeah. I mean, I'm very passionate about it. Cause I know like go, that was like a big part of my journey from atheist to believer was, mm. uh, coming to believe in like coming to uh, accept and understand what I believe as a, um, a non-compromising view of free will mm-hmm. why do the evil things happen and god doesn't intervene mm-hmm. um, and that's just like what i think that i'm not saying that's what it is right I'm saying that's just the question that's right. the thing that you have to tackle the hurdle as a believer or as a non-believer that is asked is why does god allow people to make choices that have evil dev- like awful devastation mm-hmm. or why does god allow things that have no uh culprit like natural disasters to wipe out a hundred thousand people. Right. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that. And so all that said conversation that devotes that deserves more time, but a video that I've always loved from uh, my early college days Mm -hmm. that I love sitting down because it's so early. Well, not early, but like early two on E tens, I would say, Mm -hmm. uh, animation youtube animation and it's before youtube became like a a cult hit platform for mm-hmm. you know this was like this is when um it's like trogdor era <laughs> no not trogdor <laughs> that was like i that was, uh, like, that was like ipod video that's true it was like pre-youtube this is this was like when vsauce was just taking off okay um but it's a video here and i'll uh, i'll pause our white bat audio that's right folks White Bat Audio made by Carl Casey is the music that we jam to. Check him out. He's incredibly talented. You've probably heard a lot of his stuff elsewhere on YouTube. Uh, This video is made by Dark Matter 2525. Uh, It's called This Video is a Universe. And there it requires an avail uh, like a level of being self-aware while watching it that Mm -hmm. you you are you may ask the same questions these characters ask in the video, mm-hmm. but right now you are taking the position of a creator. Okay. Um, and so the title is click here to begin the universe. Hello. How did I get here? Hello. So he's stuck. He's stuck in the video. He can't get out. (laughs) Who are you? I I don't know. I just got here. Me too. What is this place? It's everywhere. Really? Yeah. See for yourself. That side is one end of everywhere, and this side is the other end. So, we just explored the entire universe? Yeah, it would appear so. Wait, look at that. What? Right there. It's it's really hard to see. I don't see anything. You gotta look really hard. Oh yeah, I see it. The universe is one minute, ten seconds old. Exactly. Do you remember anything Mm -hmm. before one minute, ten seconds ago? Now that you mention it, No, I don't. Me neither. What does that mean? It means we just now came into existence. Why? How? I don't know. But we must have been created for a reason. How do you know? 
Because we couldn't have just been created by nothing. Well, who says there was ever nothing? Not me. I say there was a creator. Why are the choices either a creator or nothing? What other choices are there? I don't know. Then how could you possibly say I'm wrong? Because I don't need to know the right answer to be able to recognize the wrong answer. Well, at least I have an answer. A creator. If there is a creator, then where is he? And how could he have created anything before time even began? Two minutes, 13 seconds ago. Maybe the creator exists outside of time and space. After all, how could he create the universe without being separate from it? But if the universe is everywhere, then how could there be a place outside of it? Only the creator exists outside of it. That seems like an awful lot of assumptions. Look, obviously time began. We can see it for ourselves. Something had to cause it to start ticking. That something is what created us. I don't think that logically follows. Of course it does. The universe isn't infinite if it had a beginning. Therefore, at some point, time is going to cease. And then we will join the creator. And you'll see that I'm right. Join the creator? How do you know that? It just makes sense. Look. If that time ends and this is all there is, then we have no purpose, no meaning. I don't think that that's... You want your entire life to have no meaning? I don't think that being finite implies meaninglessness. Sure it does. It means that everything you'll ever do will amount to nothing. Why does what my life will amount to in the future matter more than what it does amount to in the present. I just can't believe that this is all there is. There has to be a greater purpose. Okay, fine. Let's say there is. So what is our purpose then? To have a relationship with the Creator. Why would the Creator put us here then, instead of in His presence? He wants us to seek Him out. I'm sorry, it just seems like you're making an awful lot of unfounded assumptions. I mean, you can't really prove any of this, can you? I know it's true. Because the Creator revealed it to me. But I've known you throughout your entire existence, and I've never seen this supposed Creator speak to you. He revealed it through me. I can feel it in my heart. That's how you know? I think you could say that you believe it, maybe, but I don't think you can claim to know for sure. Just look around you. Look at me. Look at yourself. The universe began. It had to have been set in motion, which implies a prime mover. That's how I know there's a creator. Wait, I thought you just said you knew it because you felt it in your heart. Uh, yeah, that too. What makes you think our creator started time? Obviously, there had to be a first cause. Everything that begins to exist has a cause. The universe began to exist, therefore the universe had a cause. That first cause was the one and only creator, who is spaceless, timeless, uncaused, all-knowing, all-powerful, perfectly good, and he created us because he wants to have a relationship with us. Well, come on. I mean, can you come up with an alternative explanation? I think so. What if, hear me out, what if there's much more than what we've observed here, and we're just being sort of arrogant in assuming that this is all there is? What if this isn't all there is? What if there are other people out there? beyond this finite universe, and they live in sort of a multiverse that already existed, and it was one of those people who started time for us. Being created doesn't necessarily mean that we were created for the creator, nor does it imply that our creator was the prime mover. Perhaps he came into existence through a natural process. Maybe he created us with a program that was written by other creators, 
using a machine on a network, requiring all kinds of utilities and infrastructure, which means our very existence might rely on what countless creators have done. Maybe we were created for other people to start our timeline and then watch us go through our entire existence for their amusement or enlightenment or whatever. Maybe they could even pause time or make time jump forward or backward at their whim. Perhaps we've already had this conversation and it's being replayed. Perhaps our choices are merely an illusion and everything we do has been predetermined to happen a certain way. What if this is the only possible way we could be? Maybe there's even thousands of copies of this exact same universe with us in it, all being played out in the exact same way. And we'll both be oblivious as we just go through this same conversation over and over again as different people watch us from within their own timeline. And that will be the sum total of our existence. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but that's just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> Talk about assumptions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's next? All the people watching us are going to rate the creator's universe and give it a thumbs up or something? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Just forget I said uh, it. Personally, I'd like to think that my life will go on when that timer stops ticking. Yeah, me too. I think it will. I mean, after all, our lives would be meaningless if it all just ends when that timer stops. And the Creator obviously created us with a meaningful purpose in mind. Of that, I have no doubt. What do you think it'll be like when that timer stops? We'll go on to another place where there won't be any more difficult questions. And we will live in eternal happiness. I wish I could believe that, but I don't think I do. What do you believe? I think that when that clock stops, so do we. Well, that's kind of depressing. Yeah, maybe. But I don't think the truth really cares about my feelings. And I don't really remember what non-existence was like before that timer started, you know? Maybe it's just like that after it all ends. Hmm. One thing is certain, though. What's that? We should make the most of our time while we still have it. That's not so certain. Especially if we go on for an eternity after this. Well, at least one thing we can both agree on is that it will end. Yep. So how much time do you think we have left? I don't know. Really, it could end at any moment. Tell me that that is not one of the, like, simplest thought-provoking videos. Oh, yeah. And, definitely. Like, I've watched that video... I don't know, maybe a dozen times. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and every time it's like refreshing to watch the like conversations of the assumptions made about me mm -hmm. being the one to press play mm -hmm. and the assumptions of um, the original creator of the video. Mm -hmm. And there's times where they're both right, times where they're both wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's it's interesting because the truth is, is like, in a way, at the end of the video, mm -hmm. they do go on living mm -hmm. in our minds as we converse about it. And our own theories of like, what that really is saying and like what we believe in, is it is it valid? Right. Is one point more valid than the other? And so I just, uh, I, I kind of want to hear your thoughts on it, you know? You know, I would like to see like a survey of different people, basically what they identify some of their, like just, just like basically what some of their beliefs are in the, in this topic and then have them watch this. And just at the end, it's very simple. It's like, who did you identify with? Yeah. You know? 
So I identified with both of them. But like the, I lean towards the guy that's speaking about the creator. Yeah. You know, because that's my, my view mm-hmm. of our universe, you know, but at the same time, the, uh, they're in this video, these guys are, their whole universe is this little screen that we're watching them on. Yeah. And they're, they are in a finite amount of time and they're potentially purposeless besides the fact that they maybe make many other creators think about their own purpose. Exactly. And, you know, so yeah, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a good, very simple way to break down, you know, kind of even, I think it's a good way to break down to how humanity has arrived at different conclusions, mm-hmm. you know? And it, it, it very much takes the conclusions as a, like we as humanity come to. Mm-hmm. And I think it like, you know, here, here, here I am as, you know, a Christian saying this, right? Like, mm-hmm. I think it makes it a, a really good point to make you think, what is the purpose? Mm-hmm. Is it, is it nihilistic in that, like, at the end, we, we are, we're a philosophy, you know, like, is mm-hmm. per, perhaps like if you look at human time, that is what everyone is that's dead to us today. Mm-hmm. Everyone who's lived is impact like the whole their whole existence that continues on is simply a, a philosophy and a thought. Mm-hmm. Um, they are part of our thoughts. They are all part of what we believe, and that's exactly kind of what this video becomes. Um, now, all that said, you know, it falls apart just like any other kind of mm-hmm. example when you start mm-hmm. really picking apart and stuff like that because there's things that you and I have entire knowledge of Mm -hmm. that that video can't encompass Mm -hmm. and we can point out where the video is wrong, like Mm -hmm. where, where their, their their thoughts and stuff are wrong. But at the same time, we also have to then be willing to assert that we could be wrong. Right. You know, we have to accept that we could be wrong about the assumptions we have. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think, I mean, I've, I've had that video create some of the best conversations I've ever had with people who were non-believers, not Christians mm-hmm. and like really going into the philosophy of it because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, I think I agree with you. I think the guy who believes in, in a benevolent, not necessarily benevolent, but in a, in a creator that has good intentions mm-hmm. is more true. Mm-hmm. Like that video was created with the good intentions mm-hmm. of fostering healthy conversation Mm-hmm. And for the characters to live on in your mind to help you break down and analyze these these thoughts. Right. And so I think that part is a little bit more real mm-hmm. and valid. One thing that's interesting, too, would be like maybe one of the biggest takeaways, immediate takeaways from that video would be, you know, the guy who believes in a creator and believes that eventually if you go on forever and you'll just be in eternal happiness, Mm -hmm. then I think that if you only latch onto that, you can actually find yourself in a sense of purposelessness more because of the, what the other guy said was, I don't, I think that maybe what we do here in the present is most important. Mm Mm-hmm. And so you can, I think it's easy for like for Christians to remove themselves from the importance of the now. Yeah. Even like, like, you know, a very, a very simple one or common one would be like, if you want to try to talk about like climate change sure. with a, with a Christian, you might typically get a response of like, well, it's all ending anyways. So what, what should we do about it? Sure. You know, to stop it, you yeah. know, type of thing. Um, where there is then the argument of like here and now good stewardship. Right, right, right. And so the, like the, you have to strike a balance. I think, but I think full life is found in there and like your purpose is in the now, mm-hmm. but your hope is in like the forever. Yeah. You know? And so the, but people can very easily just, you know, especially believers can get into this actually a place of apathy and not, you know, feeling like anything they do may necessarily will matter. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Anyways, 
fun video. Check it out. Watch it for yourself. Have conversations about it with people. Mm. I've always found it as a good video for What's the title of it again for people? Uh, this video is a universe mm. by Dark Matter 2525. Mm. Um, and I, I got to just say, I just appreciate the creator of that video mm -hmm. and the thoughtfulness to not ever have it break down into like a, in, in the form of an insult. Right. Right. It never divul divulges down into like them insulting one another. It's mm -hmm. all, it's just a conversation. Very non bias in there. Yeah. So anyways, um, <clears throat> that, uh, man, philosophical podcast from, uh, I mean, we talked about a lot of things, but, at the end, there are some, some pretty fun things to hopefully leave people thinking on. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think that uh, if anything, you matter. You you just might have an eternal soul, but you have purpose now. Yep. And, and if you ever have the chance, take those socks with the, <laughs> the grippy. with the grippy bottoms on them from the hospital if you're ever in there because you never know when you're gonna need them. You never know when you're gonna need those socks, man. Yeah, so, yeah. We uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. It's been a fun night hanging out, and uh, you know, give us a review if you would like. Um, and till next time, Ken. Till next time. Thanks for tuning in. If you love this episode, drop us a review. If you have qualms or comments, leave us a voicemail on our website. While you're there, check out our latest news, merch, and deals from our sponsors. Till next time, Ken. <laughs>